Tunnel Talk and No Facts All Feelings Wrestling Podcast on the Social Suplex Network. I'm Allie. I'm Ann. And I'm Leah. It's a wrestling podcast. You, That's you could, the podcast that it is. You could start a new Nailed bit it. where you put a new interest <laughs> in, in that space every time. Bible. Bible podcast. People would get concerned, though. Network. They'd be like, oh, no, is it a supernatural podcast now? <laughs> I mean, you could and just. you know what? For the first 10 minutes, you might not be able to figure it out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, my God. We you actually... finished it. We finished, we finished it. it. We finally finished Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Yeah. We didn't even really debrief it that much. I think. <laughs> there was a real feeling of, you know, kind of like you cross the finish line and you dissipate into the universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it everything you dreamed of, Leah? Leah actually did the whole show. I did the I whole show. Piggybacked. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that my brain has less wrinkles <laughs> than it started with, I would yeah. say. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what, that's what you want. Like, you yeah. want to smooth it out. Yeah. 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 Supernatural is brain Botox. You heard it here first. Yeah. 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 Brain Botox fillers fillers for your brain well if anybody wants to suggest any other just really deranged the thing shows is, i i constantly am on the hunt for recommendations and people don't understand you when you're like no it yeah. has to be stupid because people will be, be like mid, yeah uh oh like why don't you watch white collar and you're like do you know how complicated the plots of white collar are <laughs> I can't, I can't back you up on that. I've watched a lot of white collar I and couldn't get you just ignore the, most of what's happening. I could most not. Most of what's happening, you just ignore. I think I got through three episodes and I was like, this is too intelligent. They are using <laughs> multi-syllable words. They're well, You're like, you don't understand how dumb it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Even on yeah. my own damn podcast, we're not understanding. I need, I need I to have, bring it down. <laughs> I uh, I understand what you're looking for. I just I don't want us to be saying basically saying that white collar is intellectual fair. That's what I don't want us to say. Okay, it doesn't make sense in other ways. It's incredibly stupid in other ways. Okay, it's trash. It's trash in the garbage. Okay. I also hit. I've been watching SBU from season twelve forward, but now I've hit the part where Elliot Stabler comes back. So I got on season twenty two or something. But like now, I need to pay attention because there's like overlap, and I have to jump mm. to organized crime to see the crossover stuff. So now, now I can't watch it like like four episodes as I'm falling asleep or whatever. So I'm really yeah. also at loose ends. And what I've done is I've jumped back to season six. So <laughs> well, and if you'd like to join me in Riverdale. I, I, I did take in a little Riverdale last week because at one point I tried watching it and I got a fair way through the first season, but it was more of a tonal issue for me where Riverdale, like sometimes it's so stupid that it's not really stressful, but it would all be presented as stressful. So I get stressed out like a, like a, like a scared dog kind of like, it's, Oh, this could be really bad. And it's like, it couldn't, it's just Riverdale, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you I tend to like a brighter stop. lit show than that too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I feel like that's a component. Yes, that is true. That that's what I tend to go for <laughs> when I get my monk. I get my monk in. <laughs> We've all got our specific preferences <laughs> for the stupid <laughs> stuff we watch <laughs> for our private time, our private stupid for time. Our private. Time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about our private time anymore. <laughs> Does anyone have? Do you have anything else you wanted to report before we talk about wrestling? <laughs> no. I did think for a moment. I, I was like, what's going on in my life? No. <laughs> my nephew Not loves the woolly mammoth hat that I made oh. for him. My brother keeps texting me. He's like, oh, the Dino Dana episode with the woolly mammoth came on. <laughs> so he had to make me pause it and run and get it so he could wear it. He wanted to wear it to school today. So oh, that's, that's pretty sweet. Oh, that's so sweet. I that's feel like really a success. Gosh. Yeah. You're, you're the number one yeah. aunt, auntie yeah. aunt. Hell yeah. Auntie no. Auntie <laughs> Auntie That's how we say it. Yeah. Yes. And I, I guess we should bring up that we published our uh, review pod. And yes. uh, if it's already on the feeds, if you hadn't already seen it, we watched five matches. Mm -hmm. Five yeah. very good matches. Very good. And we have a bunch more in the, in the tank for next month. Yeah, oh. we've got. We, we, thank you guys for for sending them our way and for our beautiful five star reviews, which we treasure like our treasure. little dragon horde. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, we had the best time. We can't wait to to watch the other ones uh, that we that we have in the tank. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about guys. Let's, let's talk about wrestling. Okay, <laughs> we are a wrestling podcast after all. Enough private time. Enough <laughs> mammoth hats. <laughs> enough shilling our past product. <laughs> let's get into the taggy tourney. Okay. Uh, the Young Bucks fought Private Party on Dynamite, not before they had a little backstage interview in which Nick cheesed like a literal demon, <laughs> and Matt cheerfully told Renee to smile more. Um, they were absolutely just nutso vibes. <laughs> Great. It was crazy. That smile that Nick was doing was like nothing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I don't know how he how he uncovered that facial expression, <laughs> basically, but every time he does it, it's like, oh, no. <laughs> I really enjoyed every way that they were described. Uh, Bleacher Report described them like crooked real estate uh, real estate developers developers from Florida who might end up arrested by Don Johnson. I also saw mm. somebody describe them as their Cuban uncles. Like mm. <laughs> every single way, I was just like, "Yeah, that's right." <laughs> you can't say they're giving you nothing. They're giving you something. So true. <laughs> Uh, Matt also explained in this backstage interview that lightning never strikes twice and private party who beat the bucks in AEW's inaugural tag team tournament would be unable to do so again. And they didn't. So, uh, the match itself, both teams, uh, engaged in a little bit of light cheating. Poor Nick slipped doing an EVP trigger. Uh, I don't think, I don't think he can, I, th- I think he wasn't injured. Is yeah. that where people live? Yeah. No, he seems Dave, so. Dave said this morning that he's fine. Great. So he's probably just mad at himself. And um, then they did this kind of mo- I don't know what happened here at the end when they were pinning Mark Quinn. But yeah. What was that? Matt kind of lo- pushed Nick's body down on top of Mark Quinn. And that's it all they pinned of, him. It kind of felt like Matt was being like, oh, I'm sorry that that EVP trigger didn't work out for you. I want you to still be involved in this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we'll do Get it together, we'll buddy. <laughs> mad at you we'll do it together <laughs> uh what do you guys want to talk about uh how about the fact <laughs> that in their in the actual match they had new gear that looked like suits uh <laughs> but looks like suits <laughs> can't say they were suits that, no, no no looked it's like crime suits. against suits and yeah. Someone in the social suplex discord described it as and I will I can't get this out of my head gender reveal gear <laughs> <laughs> they were well, wearing pink was. and blue and that was Seth Retrogren <laughs> and I thought it was so funny <laughs> they were wearing pink and blue and it is true that the way that like a, a wrestling costume that looks like a suit is like a little baby outfit <laughs> that looks like a suit yeah. like it's the same yeah. basic deal yeah like when no you else. put a onesie that looks like a tuxedo on a newborn yes yeah. exactly uh no one's pregnant right now right because i would love a gender reveal AEW party <laughs> where one of the young bucks jump out of a cake wearing one of those <laughs> suits either the blue or the pink like i think cody would have loved that <laughs> it's a girl <laughs> Cody, Cody might have. I don't know that he would have wanted anybody else to be involved, like any other human beings to be involved in mm. human beings. <laughs> Our friend uh, Nico had suggested that they could actually be hired for gender reveal parties where they wrestle in those suits and whoever wins the match is the gender mm. of the baby. I was like, That's yeah, nice. that rules. <laughs> You get to watch a fun Young Bucks match, and then you're, like, rooting for one of the other of them. And mm, that's true. People someone, would be, yeah, cheering. Someone once told me that they um, were done with gender reveal parties because they'd been to too many where the father was visibly disappointed. Oh, at the my God. I was like, that's Ooh. so dark. Wow. Ooh. It's also just kind of dark to think about having been to more than one gender reveal party I for know. for me. No, not I have my never social been, set. I've never been Mm-mm. to one. Yeah, not even one. No. I've been to a couple, but I would not say they're like fun. They're kind of they're kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> kind yeah. of weird. Yeah, well, because like baby showers have like a clear trajectory. Like they're always short. There's you know the mm. same kind of things. The gender right. reveal party. It's a weird mix of people because it's not like just like you know like it's it's a weird mix of people. And then the only activity anyone has planned is the gender reveal thing. And so it just makes for a very strange vibe. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that. I think what Anne said makes sense. There's a lot of people I wouldn't want to be around when they're finding out a baby's 
yeah. gender. Yeah. Or I feel like if you have gender at birth. Yeah. If you have a real strong preference for that, maybe don't do a gender reveal party where your entire all your friends and family will yeah. be watching you find that out. <laughs> that can be a private moment. Mm-hmm. Process that on your own. Yeah. Well, I don't know what we're talking about, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> any thoughts on the match? <laughs> Anyway, so that's our tight 10 on gender <laughs> reveal parties. Um, yeah, the match. The match. I thought it, it was good. It, it was, was a really match. good match. It was, like, good it was match. a fantastic match. I mean, like, I think, like, a lot of people have said that, like, private party had, like, ring rusts. And I don't know if that's, like, true because obviously I couldn't tell. But I didn't think that their top, their matches with top light were that good. But I'll tell you for free that I loved this, like, I feel like yeah. everybody was at their best. Like, there's a lot. Of, I mean, minus the Nick Sposh. I'm so sorry, the Nick. Slip. I know you didn't like that. I know Nick you didn't like that. As no. best. Nick, everyone else was at their best. But you <laughs> wasn't at your best. Don't Nick do that. You were best for the whole match. And it's honestly, I thought it was a, it's a good gimmick to be accidentally slipping in because you're supposed to look like a kind of goofy ass yeah. asshole. Yeah. So I think that, that that's what he should focus on. He actually did some really good character work. Yeah. It's great character work. And he got to be involved in, in the pin. And that's, I think that's beautiful. <laughs> I think it's actually quite beautiful, Nick. So it's surprising that they haven't slipped more in those robes that they wear. Those horrifically well, proportioned robes. Almost I know. <laughs> so I'm worried. But he didn't fall. So that was maybe he, he should make like this part of his bit where he just keep like in every <laughs> appearance he slips a little bit and then is like if you mention it I'll fucking buy you. Yeah, that's a good idea. That would be really funny actually that's if they were backstage idea. and people were being like, "Oh, Nick, the finish! Like, don't feel bad." And he's like, "I'll kill." I, I will find you. What, what finish? What finish? What finish? Seems like uh, it went perfect. Speaking yeah, speaking of backstage, to go back to the uh, <laughs> beginning promo again, uh, how much did you guys love Nick being like, "Where's Alex Marvez, Renee?" <laughs> so Ren- good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Renee does such good faces in response mm-hmm. to that stuff. But yes, I love that Alex Marvez is there assigned. And Tony. one of them, I one of them, I can't remember which one of them was like, "He's better looking than you, Renee." <laughs> It's God just bless. not as fun to bully Renee as it is to bully Alex Marvez, you know? I know. That because period of time where Alex Marvez was not around was so, like, mm. sad. Like, I'm glad he's back. Yeah. We were Something concerned. about Alex Marvez's, like, whole attitude when he's being bullied is he it's like he's being like on some level i deserve i know i know i know i deserve this and that's not that's why renee can't be bullied the same way because she's looking at them like i don't deserve yeah (laughs) and in fact you'll get what's coming to you in the next life renee's vibe is like i could walk at any time like please (laughs) please push me and then like Tony yeah. Shavani sometimes comes close to Alex Marvez's deal, but there's still he even <laughs> even when he looks ridi- still a ridiculous, bit of self-respect. Yeah, yeah, Tony has like an inner core of pride that you can sense mm. in some way. Alex Marvez <laughs> does not have that. That has been Mm-mm. snuffed no. out years yeah. ago. <laughs> it's true. Renee's energy is I don't need this job, but Alex Marvez he needs this he job. needs this job. <laughs> this job is all life. <laughs> if I don't have this job, my life is over. <laughs> Love you, Alex Marvez. Uh, you guys want to talk about now, Leah? Can you name the move? The the no, I absolutely not, absolutely not. No. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, somebody oh gifted it and said, "Oh, we're doing MC MG uh, Motor City Machine Guns callouts now," and so it was. Uh, I, I did. Mary tell us what it was. Detroit. Something about Detroit. Yeah, she did, but I don't. Made in of course, Detroit. Remember. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm locking it in. Made in Detroit. <laughs> Made in Detroit. Somebody look it up right now. Fact check. It won't be me, but Leah is, um, I think. Yeah. They d- anyway, they did the Motor City Machine Guns move, and everyone's been saying online, Motor City Machine Guns, are their contract is up at the end of March with TNA, and they're on the on the prowl, maybe, going somewhere else, maybe. There have been a lot of references from the, the AEW, from the little babies. Yeah. Oh, it seems so excited, little Nick Wayne and Dante. And, Apparently, they fathered many of the little babies in AEW. Yeah, they fathered little Jay White. Uh, anyway, there have been a lot of references on Twitter. People are clearly, you know... Uh, suggesting well, yeah. that perhaps they could be coming in. What was the move name? Mary did not name it. Oh, dang. <sighs> we named, we saw its name somewhere. We'll find it later. Anyway, um, I just wanted to check in with you guys. How, 
how do you feel about the idea of Motor City machine guns coming to AEW? I feel extremely positive. So positive. I mean, yeah. it doesn't. I Want mean, em. extra. It's extra uh-huh. encouraged by having just seen the empty arena match. Yes. But like the idea. So the only tag teams that are on the Bucks' level right now are the Lucha Brothers, where one has been hurt and like they just had like a big long series, and FTR, who we fucking hate, right? Um, There's I, I don't consider FTR <laughs> to be on the Bucks' level. You know and you're leaving I'm so sorry. best friends <laughs> off that list, too. Uh, I don't hurt. understand. Hurt. 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 Okay, well, let, hurt. Lucha Brothers and- got mentioned even though they're hurt, Leah, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't talk okay. to me about that because Chuck Taylor is somewhere going, don't stop, don't mention best friends, don't mention best friends. I know. Why would you mention best friends? I'm trying yeah, to we'll respect get to that in a Chuck's preferences. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time ever, sure. Okay. I, of course, no, I'm like, it's never happened on this podcast before. When but. he says he wants something from me, I give it. He says, don't put my name in your mouth. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like, it would just be really great to have, like, a tag team that, like, the Bucks genuinely, like, were rivals against. Like, that would be cool. And, you know. It would be nice to have some established tag teams. Some tag teams that are actually committed to one another. You bring some respect back to the tag team division. Yeah. And when divorce is running rampant and all these people are living in sin without even committing themselves to one another, like Ricky and Big Bill. Yes. Please. What we know about Motor City Machine Guns is that our friend Mary loves them. She's taught us a few things about them. I know they love each other. I know they're monogamous, okay? <laughs> I know they're in a happy, committed relationship. And sometimes that, you know, it's like they've gone and done their separate things, but they're always that they're always together in their hearts. Yeah. That's what I know. Yeah. Yeah. I okay, agree. so that's the energy we need in the AEW tag team division in sickness and in health. And yeah. I know that Anne has a crush on the one that looks the yeah. straightest. I was about to ask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is true, but I didn't love that and, phrasing. <laughs> and that is, that's Chris Sabin, right? Chris Sabin. Yeah. Is I was going to say the he one has that a real, I, he has a real job too. Oh, I think he does. Yeah. He, he just or looks like a one of them has a real of, job, but I don't yeah. remember who it is. And our friend Beth once burned me by saying, oh, yeah, that makes sense because he looks like what all straight men are attracted to, or straight men, straight women are attracted to. And I was like, okay, well, sure. Yeah, let's call me out. Okay. Being bullied well, for my orientation in the group chat, but okay. It's really, it's really hard when you are, when you're in the minority in a space, you know, it's pretty when rough. you're in a, when you're just a straight girl in a gay space. Baby. Yeah. You guys don't know the suffering that I go through <laughs> as a straight person every, every day. Look, I think the, uh, the important thing is we want, we want him to come. Can you guys yeah. get in here already? Please. I really, I think my dream is for uh, the Bucks to win the belts at Dynasty and the and, and uh, Motor City Machine Guns to walk in and interrupt their celebration and do one of those sexy yeah. stare downs. Ooh, yeah, ooh, that's what I want to see. Yeah, it's sexier okay. the better. So do that. So the, uh, the, um, Tony, book it. Uh, <laughs> okay, then later on Dynamite, uh, best friends Trent and Orange Edition fought the Undisputed Kingdom in their first round tag tournament. Matt. Jesus Christ. I keep getting the thumbs up today, guys. Um, I won't explain that. Okay, in their, <laughs> in their first round tag tournament match and won. So Roddy and Chuck Taylor were both ringside. Roddy attempted to intervene. Chuck prevented it. Later, Chuck did intervene uh, and allowing Greg to get the pin. So again, everyone was cheating. I love it. It's running rampant this week. Um, and best friend's celebratory hug was interrupted by... Matthew Nicholas Jackson coming up the Cody Vader to loom threateningly and kind of mouth, you know, kind of like, I'll get you my pretty stuff at them. And um, they will face best friends on TV next week in the tag tourney tournament quarterfinals. I'm really not doing good this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> in the tag tournament quarter. quarter. I think it's actually the semifinals, if that's easier to say. <laughs> yeah. The semifinals. I you know what? I can't really, I can't get into the way that I did that. Okay. Well, <laughs> you did fine. Run it. You did fine. Yeah. I think that was great. Thank, thanks, friends. Thank you, my friends. <laughs> um, you want to talk about the new best friend shirts? Yeah. I love Can you them. believe they have two right now? 
They have two. They're both cute. They're both Incredible. cute. Yeah. And when they walked out wearing these ones, I almost thought they had just made them themselves with Sharpie in the back. They say um, Trenton Orange with Chuck Taylor win the big one. But I was yeah. like, I love that it's available for me to purchase. Mm-hmm. God, God bless Orange Cassidy for saying, I will find a low energy way. Like, I, yeah. I will always find a low energy way. And having gotten over these T-shirts that he just writes in five seconds, <laughs> like, yeah, Trenton Orange win the big one. Um <laughs> Yeah, uh, I look. You all know that we want to see Dustin wrestle. You know yeah. that we want. You know we want to see him wrestle, but more than anything, we want to see him happy. That's our point. <laughs> That's our sweet point. point. And That's our point. what we have been Sorry. forced to confront is that he is loving managing right now. Loving he it. He is really. He just is looking alive. He during this match was. His he was taking his role of kind of like water boy cheerleader so mm-hmm. fucking seriously. So seriously. Yeah. He's given Greg these go get him butt taps. He's yeah. spinning his little t shirt around. Let's go, boys. Slapping that apron with his characteristic joy de vive. <laughs> Verb life. <laughs> he was um, hold, he was holding somebody's shirt in his hands, and I don't know why he was holding it like with two hands, but it looked like he was carrying something. And I just got convinced for a minute that he was holding a tray of <laughs> snacks in case in case little guys got hungry while they were out there doing the big wrestle. Like honestly, my hungry guys. I gotta keep my hungry guys fed. <laughs> Wow. Uh, okay, that's so funny. He um, just has incredible stage mom energy right now, and I yeah. and he just looks so happy. He looks it's so crazy. Happy. It's like, do we think he's gone on antidepressants? Like, I don't know. <laughs> that's you know what? It's not for us to speculate about where his happiness comes from, but we know that if he's happy, we're happy. Okay, right. so we are. We will root for Trenton Orange with Chuck Taylor to win the big one. It's. Do we think it's right? It's not. That's not worth getting into. It's not <laughs> worth getting into whether it's right. It's what's happening, and our beautiful boy is happy. So it will console us when they don't win the big one. That yeah, they don't think that they're going to win the big one. <laughs> <laughs> but wouldn't it be a zag if they did? It would be a zag. It would if they be did. an insane zag. Like, don't you think that like all three of them would be so confused? <laughs> <laughs> well honestly yeah. like given the way they've been you know portrayed for the past however many years it's like i was a little bit surprised that they won this quarterfinal yeah, match right. against the United undisputed kingdom yeah it did feel like the it would be much more like best friends to have to endure the indignity of losing to the undisputed kingdom and having roderick strong right there dancing on their graves <laughs> yeah <laughs> garbage he's carrying that belt around he's not even defending the belt oc defended that belt every week how how long has it been since the the pay-per-view like a month at least three weeks yeah three weeks i haven't even seen i don't want to see roddy right now i'm done with roddy but he hasn't done anything with that belt i think he's Mm -hmm. defending it on rampage but uh not i mean it's against matt menard so sorry daddy manager (laughs) i love you so much but I would not say <laughs> that that match is going to be like, I don't know. You're, you're fairly no. convinced what the outcome will be. <laughs> it's not getting a Kenny Omega five star. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Such a damning t- thing to say. I love it. <laughs> you want to talk about what, what Matt Jackson did before coming out uh, in the Cody Vader? Why did he shave his beard off? <laughs> I no, I think we know. I think we. I think. I think I got right. too comfortable. I was like, I'm. I'm starting to love him. I'm starting to. I mean, I'm starting to love him. I'm starting to find <laughs> his attractiveness again. I'm starting to like. You know, I'm. Mm. <laughs> again, I'm. It was the, the full feminine beard. I'm yeah. in the movie. It was a full feminine beard. I, I'm in my favorite movie Hook, and I'm a lost boy, and I'm touching Matt's face, and I say, I see you. <laughs> I see you under there. And he said, no, not this character. No, no, no. no. And so he shaves like actually full outfit change and beard shave. Yeah. But I didn't even notice like when he was, when they were doing the interview with Renee, I said like, I think his natural beauty is trying to escape. I think that like he is tired of being shoved under a bushel. He looks luminous. Like (laughs) even though he is just this horrible 
goofy EVP character, something in me is singing when I look <laughs> at him. And then he came out later and he'd gotten rid of the beard. And I still thought he looked quite luminous. I guess it was that kind of that freshly shaven skin actually at that point. <laughs> but later when I was looking at the pictures, I said, I didn't even notice he had the beard. But of course that's what was calling to me and saying like Aww. i'm as beautiful as i've ever been yeah i'm actually as beautiful as I, if the second i grow my my full feminine beard out again i will be the loveliest woman you've ever seen i will be i will be a beauty queen, beauty queen. and he now had I'm just, to get rid of it for that reason he did i'm just picturing you know how like in the presidential debates they'll have focus groups where they like turn the dial depending on how much they like what things say and they see the graph I, i'm <laughs> matt jackson's back there in the back and he's like watching your reactions like on the graph he's like oh they're above the level we gotta do something about this it's it's literally that it's like the inverse of his old like showing off for the tumblr girlies mm. segments where it's like he's tracking horniness on tumblr and he's like yeah. they got a little too high, a little too high. they are a little too happy down. right now he's like yeah. chuck taylor give me give me your resources what are you using for this <laughs> Although Chuck, Chuck Taylor, give me, Chuck not Taylor has no resources. <laughs> yeah, but he's been trying for years. <laughs> he's he's been working miserably. so hard to get the Tumblr girls to leave him alone, and he has failed worse than ever. He's the last yeah. person you want to get advice from. That's true. That's, it's like look at Dustin. See what he did. Do the opposite somehow. I don't know how, <laughs> but yeah, actually, he's he's knocking down FDR's door like. Right yeah, there you on the go. Roster, <laughs> the Tumblr girl repellent, Dustin okay. Rhodes. Uh, upcoming this weekend, Big Bill and Ricky are going to fight Top Flight, and FTR will fight the Infantry. This is all on the other side of the tourney bracket. Any thoughts on those matches or where we're heading? Should uh, with this is a real bracket? should we rank our side outcomes of the here? <laughs> 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 by our personal preference yeah or what is what, we what is your well. best okay. case scenario top flight goes into the finals same best case scenario same. second yeah. base best case scenario big bill and rookie no the infantry i, guess, I was also I, gonna go infantry because i don't have any i have no prior <laughs> no opinions yeah. yeah they're fine like yeah. sure I, everybody likes captain sean captain right yeah captain yeah. sean dean captain. suddenly i was like yeah. sergeant Lieutenant? <laughs> Major <Sean> Corporal? <laughs> uh, Sergeant Major? Yeah. So And then, and then, and third, Ricky, then Ricky Bill, Bill, and then Ricky. FTR. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Last. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a real nightmare side of the bracket and top flight and the infantry. Yeah. That have. But the rest of them. And the only, the only. <laughs> okay, so I hate FTR. <laughs> I mean, we'll yeah. call a okay, space. what just happened <laughs> in, with Anne is she said it's a nightmare side, side of the bracket, except top flight, except the infantry. Okay, just FTR. <laughs> just FTR. Because <laughs> even Big Bill and Ricky have Big Bill going. Yeah. Yeah. And Big Bill, of course, we, of love. Course we love. It's Big really only Bill. three out of eight of them, I guess, are the nightmare side of the bracket. <laughs> the only thing that I don't, that I feel uncertain about with top flight. I mean, I don't, I guess I don't even know what I think is going to happen, but they did fight top plate like twice fairly recently. Right. So th yeah. I guess that's making me think like, it's not going to be top flight. I, know. I don't think, I don't think be it will be, either. but I, I also on some level, I guess we'll be a little shocked if it's FTR. Well, maybe it's, it will be. It's one of those no win scenarios because if it's not FTR, then I'm going to be low-key annoyed and be like, oh, sure, you ducked losing to the Bucks. Of course you did. But if it is FTR, it's going to be like, okay, yeah, I do want FTR. I mean, I want the Bucks to get their win back, so it's not, like, so it's what? Yeah. Three, two. Two to two, I two think, two. is it? Uh, but I th I have to watch an FTR I match. I could be wrong. You know? I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that would be two, two, yeah. Yeah, I watching don't an watch FTR match. match, ugh, no. I will yeah. not be entertained. But it sucks. But well, I, I want them to beat FTR for the belts, like, in in theory. You know what I mean? Like, in theory, that would no. be, like, really spitting in FTR's stupid faces. But, <laughs> but it's always going to be secondary to, like, they should have won the belts actually off of FTR. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, like, so if they win them in this tournament where nobody technically holds the belts, uh, whatever. It's fine. Um, 
if FTR win, uh, we riot. Yeah. I think that's it's simply you know, not acceptable. Yeah. If, if FTR, FTR win the belts, we riot. If FTR wins the belts, there will this podcast won't update again. It'll just go radio silent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't it's the last straw. I don't care how much we've been enjoying everything else. I don't think that's gonna happen, but with old TK, you never know. You never uh, know. Let's quick check in on on Big J, okay, and his time of ongoing trial. We haven't this hasn't been on the podcast recently. Uh, this week on Dynamite, uh, Jericho and Hook cut an incredibly weird promo in which Jericho, with a somewhat <laughs> low energy defeated aspect, told Hook that Jericho has never run a wrestling school or been a manager. But if Hook has any questions about becoming a big star, Jericho is here for him. He really wants to answer them. And Hook responded by saying, I appreciate your praise, Chris. And of course, I'll take advice from you. You're Chris Jericho. But you're Chris Jericho. I know who you are. And Jericho immediately just kind of doubles down again, low energy on his desire to be hooks mentor. What did you make of this promo? This dialogue sounded like it was written by AI. (laughs) It was so weird. And like hooks delivery was weird too. So he was like, I appreciate your praise, Chris Jericho. And you're just like, what is happening? I thought him saying like, I'll take it. Of course, I'll take advice from you. You're Chris Jericho, but you're Chris Jericho. I know who you are. I actually did like that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, more people should be probably responding to Jericho that way by being yeah. like, yeah, of course you could help me, but you could hurt me too. Yeah. Because of your inherent nature, Scorpion. Yeah. Yeah. Jericho's energy really has been so weird lately. It's like, he's really struggling and the crowds are not responding to him the way he wants them to. And it's like such a I'm, stressful bummer. It's I'm not surprised yeah. that he's not doing well though, because I do think that the way that like the wrestling community has responded to this man, clearly just like not having a great couple of months and f- feeling a lack of self-confidence and an uncertainty about how to proceed in his career has been deranged. It has been deranged. Uh, yeah. I do think that people really have jumped right to some of those favorite, favorite <laughs> terms in the community. He's washed. Yeah. He's cooked. He's cooked. Sometimes uh, things that are said in the IWC are very like, Y'all are mean. Is this how you talk to right? each yes. other? Like, this is how you live. This yes. is what men, male communities are like. They're like, throw that man in the trash like after one bad week or it's just like okay i keep feeling kind of like sensitive about it actually because and it's not really about like fully uh, completely about chris jericho like chris jericho is just a really recent like version of where this is happening a lot but it is mean like (laughs) i know that we're mean to ftr or whatever but But ftr took a long time to get yeah. To earn the amount of disdain I have for them. And I've never said they're washed. I've never said they're washed. I just said I don't like anything they do. <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's my right. And I, I know. Will. And, like, there are people who are like, I don't like watching Chris Jericho, and I don't like when he's on my screen. Fine. And that's fine. Yeah, I've yeah, never fine. argued with anyone there. But, like, it's it's weird to me. The wrestling community has this, like, intense need to be, like, the reason why I don't like this wrestler is because I understand the wrestling business. And so I can explain to you that Chris Jericho is washed and I can't just say, I'm not enjoying what Chris Jericho is doing because Chris Jericho doesn't enjoy what Chris Jericho is doing. Like it's clearly not working. It's the classic classic male problem of expressing opinions as facts. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Trish and Sarah did a really good segment about this. Their last episode where, I mean, they were coming at it the other direction where like people are using data and stuff to try to argue why it's okay to like a wrestler. And they're like, you can just like guys. And the other, yeah. this other end of this is true where you can also just not like a guy. Absolutely. You don't have to like justify it or make up all these like insane, like evidence for why he should go away. You can just wish that he went away. I mean, you won't get it. I still have Wardlow, but you know, you can say it. <laughs> None of our wishes come None true. None of our wishes yeah, come you true. Can, <laughs> you can certainly say I'm not enjoying what Jericho's doing yeah, lately. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Like, I'm never going to argue with somebody who doesn't like Chris Jericho. Like, I, you know, in, no, our, fine. in our Discord, there's multiple people who are like, who are just like, I just don't like him. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm never going to argue with you. But yeah. when people I are I never like, argue with you for not liking Brian Danielson, even though you're so incredibly incorrect <laughs> in your opinion. <laughs> 
on fire. <laughs> I was going to try to say a similar thing. And I was like, the thing is that I would argue with you. <laughs> In fact, I see more arguments about Osprey in our future. So. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, I talk to like, game. I will not promise not to. <laughs> no, but like, you know, like, okay. So, Chris Jericho, the thing about him is that usually he's doing something, and even if yeah. you don't like it, you can like see what he's doing and admire it. What he's doing. I think yeah. what's going on right now is like he's he, all of the seams are showing. Like, whatever he's doing yeah. is so clumsy, and it's like, and I'm, I, it's like watching someone like walk across like a balance beam really badly and you're like oh my god you're gonna fall i'm this is stressing me out i can't really watch this it's weird to watch him so unconfident and tentative and low energy like usually he comes in like at least you know really ready to go and yeah his vibe to me is just like he's burnt out right now yeah. it's been a bad like there's been a lot of redirects there was the houseman stuff that never manifested into like any actual accusations or anything it was uh-huh. just a like a houseman hit job as far as we know um so. which like did fuck up the crowds and then it was kind of a like a landslide thing where he wasn't doing anything at the time that made it possible or easy to get the crowds back so yeah then it's it's like just been you yeah. know a kind of pile on you know yeah. and everything he's downhill of stuff yeah and everything he starts to do it's like then kenny's got diverticulitis yeah. sammy's suspended like yeah but he, his energy to me is just like it's really i i know from just working on normal projects at my job or normal projects that you know like creative projects i'm doing in my life like it is hard to have a run where you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm yeah. bad at this thing that I thought that I was good at. I'm mm-hmm. not sure what to do next. I'm not confident in my abilities. Like sometimes you got to put it slash yourself in the drawer for a while and you got to refill your cup. Yeah. I am running a TED yeah. talk here, <laughs> but you got to refill your cup. And no, for whatever true. reason, he has not done that. He hasn't gone off TV. I think I don't fully understand it, but I do think my impression is that Jericho is like, he's a recognized, he still has cachet as that recognizable WWE name. He plays a significant role probably in the way that they think about like how to pull viewers and ratings. So I don't know if he doesn't want to go or if Tony doesn't want him to go right now. I don't, I don't know, but I think he probably does need a break but it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't mean to sound really sensitive, but it's like, it does feel really shitty how quickly sometimes <laughs> someone will like not be doing good in wrestling and everybody is just like cooked, washed, throw them in the trash. It's like, can you just let him go to like take the sea air or something? Can you just <laughs> right. calm yeah, down? It's like... Let him go to bath. Let him spend a winter there. Let him go to the hot springs and the spa and let's like, just see how he's doing at the end of that. <laughs> it does feel like, like a human being isn't allowed to have like a bad month or a couple of weeks mm-hmm. around here like boy if, if i if i had to deal with people commenting on my personal creative issues and my issues at work the way that people yeah. like talk about like a wrestler having a bad day I would not, I would not survive it. No. And again, I am no. conscious of the fact that it's like, we don't always say nice things about people, No, but for sure. I hope that we do often mostly say, but I'd love to see them prove me wrong. Yeah. I, I want yeah. them to get back on the horse. I want them right. to do something that thrills me. I hope I don't sound like moralizing. No. But. And I mean, I think we often very much like offer this what would make us happy too but you you know what i get yeah. really sensitive about and i'm like constantly like being like that is shitty <laughs> is people constantly and i don't think anybody has ever like any but like Meltzer or you know any of those have ever like confirmed this people are always like and then jericho stole kenny away from abushi and made him be in a tag team and forced <laughs> kenny to beat the bucks in that match and i'm like why are you why are we talking about like chris jericho has a stranglehold on the booking and kenny is powerless when the facts not of that Richard situation the and they're not the little boys in the tower no. <laughs> but the facts of that situation is 
both of them, those men looked bewildered to be there. Like <laughs> Chris Jericho did dumb. not have a vibe where he's like, ha ha, I'm clout vampire and Kenny. I get his fame. They both were standing there. Like oh, we got summoned to the principal's office. What are we doing? Like, and I don't understand yeah. why people are like, you know, and then, and then Chris Jericho single handedly ruined blood and guts. And you're like, what? Why? There is a lot of people making up stories in their heads yeah. and that, that confirm what they already believe about people, which I should, all of this is good to like also say to myself. We're checking it's like, in with ourselves yeah, as well. Like, yeah. I've definitely been mean and I definitely have been like, this person probably did this and so whatever. But I think it'd probably be good for all of us to just think, I don't necessarily know what's going on backstage or I've heard maybe only a few viewpoints on perhaps a complicated situation. And Well, you know, one thing I'll say for myself is I love to say something crazy that I think happened and then go, but what do I know? Yeah. And that, I think it's that's a great so energy. Important. Yeah. It's so important yeah. to add that little, but what do I know? It's Anything could be true. Then just you one can say opinion. all the stuff you want to say. But <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? Nothing. I know. At the end of the day, I know that I know nothing. I hope that Chris Jericho, I hope he does go take the waters at bath. I hope that he reconnects with himself. I hope he I hope he just des- decides what he wants mm-hmm. and I hope he gets a little time and space and comes back and gets back up on the horse. Mm-hmm. Um, I just keep thinking about the way Rich Latta occasionally will just go mm-hmm. don't count out <laughs> Chris Jericho. And I, just, I just I'm not counting him out. Okay, universe. No. I haven't counted him out. <laughs> We'll never count him out. Big J? Never. I love you, Big J. We think he can do it. (laughs) Let's move on. Um, Osprey and Shibata fought on Dynamite. This is part of the Osprey Danielson dynasty build. And Osprey won uh, afterwards. They're shaking hands. They're raising each other's hands. They're bowing in respect. Very, very nice, cordial uh, vibe. Um, Did you guys like the match? Do you have anything you want to say about the match? They're both very, very good wrestlers. Uh, I one hundred percent do not want to like get into like how annoying every single side of the our dream matches stories <laughs> discourse <laughs> is. But I was a little bit like, I wish I knew how these men like really felt about each other. But then at the end, it turned out that how they felt about it was big, big time respect. So good for them. Yeah, and that's fine. That's good. No, I felt similar too. I think like the most frustrating thing about wrestling discourse is that there's so many bad faith faith takes that then you can never no one ever has like a good faith discussion oh God, about I anything. Know. So it's like Yeah. Just because WW like I like I saw the chart of like whatever the time on Raw where they spent more time on in ring promos than they did on match time and I was like, Okay, I would go insane in that situation. But yeah. I do feel like it's like just because I say I'd like a little so a reason to be invested in this match doesn't mean that I want, you know, more talking in the show than anything else. And I wish we could have like a discussion about how like this match would have been more enjoyable with a reason to care. Yeah. yeah. I, there's nothing I hate more than when people start talking about video packages and they're like, Oh, you want Lord. an intro to this match? You wanted them to do a little promo? You stupid idiot. You wanted a 20 minute <laughs> highly produced package with uh background music is that what you wanted you stupid little idiot watch a tv show and you're like (laughs) i no like i wanted a 30 second promo where somebody tells me like where their head's at like i I, I wanted a normal AEW promo that happens routinely on the AEW shows and i'm not even saying it's particularly like it would have helped here because like i don't i don't think that that was the point of this match no. So, but it was just the general discourse of like your only options are straight up like matches that are just like only you the 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 show begins and ends in the ring or one match for every 2 hours of promos and those are those are the only options there's no in between yeah. there's not there's yeah. nothing in that land in between and I'm like y'all make me crazy I had to go find the um the this classic configuration, the Tumblr post that was going around Twitter the other day uh, that says people be saying things so definitively, like, man, I think it depends. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that that yeah. is how I feel so often when we get into this, where it's just like, yeah, I think sometimes 
you can tell a really good story in the ring that doesn't need anything outside the ring. And sometimes you can have a really good match that doesn't really have that much of a story. And that's not the end of the world necessarily. And to me, and, and then sometimes you, well, I don't remember the things I've said. So, you know, I won't go through everything that could be the case. I think it really does depend. It just depends. Yeah. yeah. In this case, it's like, I, I thought it was a good, I thought it was a good match that I had no real investment in and I wasn't that mad about it and it's fine. And if you wanted me to have a real emotional investment in it, you probably should have done something else, but maybe you didn't. And that's okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. he's just going to fight Brian Danielson, the best technical wrestler in the world. And <laughs> there's not really a super big emotional component for me there. And that's okay too. Like it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. None of this is really for no, I mean, me. This- Except <laughs> that I like watching the yeah. men do really good wrestling, but it's not going to light me on fire. No, it's like this this match absolutely is not the one that I would have built that particular discourse around. Yeah. Like I think there's been matches yeah. where that's inc- yeah. more much more true where I'm like you you could have given me a hook on this. This I think I'm like I don't think that they could have given me a hook and I don't think it really needed it. This is the match was the well, match. Well, they have a hook backstage, a match, huh? But he was busy with Jericho. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Shing. Yeah, okay, I keep, keep talking, Lee. I'm sorry. No, that was that was that was literally just it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I like totally agree with that. I don't think this needed to be built up to any more than it had been. I will say that this match, like, totally fine. Not mad about it. Perfectly serviceable match. It didn't light me up the way that like Osprey Takesh did, did or anything though. So like it was fine. I think it just wasn't probably my preferred style brand i just kept whatever. having a moment where i was like both of these men are so cute they're just they're yeah just they are very they are really cute. Guys. yeah they look good yeah. yeah so congratulations on your bodies boys and let's move on to some more cute boys <laughs> uh, <laughs> swerve and Takeshita had their number one contenders match that was the main event of dynamite uh, they went ham on each other's beautiful bodies, uh, had a long series of false finishes before Swerve won. How how long was our overrun last night? Do you guys know? Like six minutes, maybe, I think. Yeah. Tony's allowed to go as long as he wants whenever he wants now. I mean, that is very clear. When this was started, I was like, oh, surely he won't do an overrun this week. And then I remembered that an overrun can be a mere six minutes. And I was like, oh, oh we're in danger. And then it happened. Yeah. And yeah, I, I felt it. I sensed it. And what did Leah calmly said? Now we enter our third hour of time. <laughs> 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 uh, backstage immediately after the match, Renee interviewed Samoa Joe, um, who just, I actually, it's not worth reading this. He just said nothing pretty much. Uh, <laughs> and just was like, yeah, we'll fight and we'll see if he's can fight. Okay, so Swerve and Joe are going to fight for the belt at Dynasty on April 21st. Um, any overall thoughts on the match itself? On the Swerve This one did Kesha? light me up. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. This one lit me up more, for sure. I thought it was really good. It was really fun. Uh, Ann and I were both saying that we don't know how to describe like actual good wrestling when we <laughs> see it. So it's like, this was really good wrestling, and I was really riveted. And well, what can I say about it? Uh, that it was good. <laughs> Don't have the vocabulary. Jeff said, wow, to me at one point last night, he was like, that Falcon out arrow was crazy. And I was like, Jeff, you know, I don't know what that means. And he said, Excalibur just screamed it. And, it was like, it's no. not... and then he revealed that he can't tell the Young Bucks apart. So we all have our specializations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He and I got Jeff. into a big fight about that this morning. Yeah. Well, as you should. Yeah. We'll see if you ever come back from that. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. He's not allowed on this thought didn't... ever again. <laughs> and he hasn't made that notes app apology to you yet so no he apologized via uh discord message but like in in the public channel but i do need a yeah. i do need a notes apology you, you where, need a private full yeah, apology. Yeah, apology yeah 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 i think everyone can understand girls that. the apology <laughs> needs to be as loud <laughs> as so the disrespect true. and <laughs> the disrespect, the disrespect was in just this a case, text he... message to Anne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he didn't even say it to you i, I ratted you out <laughs> him out to you tell jeff needs to send Anne an apology, apology that Anne can report back to you <laughs> so true so true <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I thought, I thought it was a, a really good match. It was not exactly what I expected. And I, then I thought that, and I was like, I don't know what I expected, but it was kind of, it was 
slow start in a sexy way. They got into some of that, like, grappling stuff to start with that handshake that then neither of them would let up, and they just got into that, oh, okay, let's do it. Yeah, I really like. I like that yeah. too. And for a minute, I was like, "That would that be a fun step?" You know what I mean? Like the whole match, <laughs> you have to hold you like hands. Hold <laughs> it's a handshake match. It's a, boys. It's a classic handshake <laughs> match. <laughs> Could you do that where um, it's but it's a tag team match and the tag team partners have to hold hands oh, the whole time? Wow, wouldn't that be fun? I think I that am intrigued. I think yeah. that if. Justin and Greg ever won the belts, they should make yeah. that like a condition of their rules. Yes. Oh, when they get to do their House of Black yeah. rules. rules. Yeah. Blah, they should have rules. made that their stipulation for their House of Black match <laughs> that they totally wasted. Oh, their my stupid God. Can you imagine how grumpy uh, Malachi like, <laughs> Malachi and Buddy hold hands like best friends the whole time? <laughs> been so fun no one did anything nobody did anything really. fun i think maybe one person did that i can't really remember um do you have any bigger picture thoughts on um we don't really have to get into it if we don't want to on like the samoa joe swerve um feud as we approach dynasty what you want to see from it do, do you think samoa joe is gonna wrestle between now and then <laughs> i don't feel confident about it <laughs> uh i I think that Swerve is going to get the belt at Dynasty, but I'm mm-hmm. worried, like, not worried. I mean, what's that? Again, what the hell do I know? But I'm like, <laughs> he. I hope he figures out, like, this character stuff before he gets the belt because I, I, I'm rooting for him so much. I, I really think I became quite convinced today um, that Samoa Joe needs to do he needs to be giving more to this feud. He needs yeah. to be giving some kind of emotional direction to this feud. He can't just keep cutting these promos that are like, I'm wrestling good and he'll be seeing that I wrestle. And they, it sounds good when he says it. I understand that he's like good on the mic, yeah. but there's nothing, there's no there there. There's nothing there. Like I think yeah. he should be being badder and badder so that Swerve can be gooder and gooder yeah. against it. Yeah. Like, contrast. do I sound simplistic? Do I sound like a toddler? Like, I don't know. It <laughs> it's just pro seems, wrestling, just so seems you right should. to me. Yeah, well, and the thing is, too, is, like, he could be actually, like, trying to get under Swerve's skin. Like, he was so, like, like his energy when Swerve and Hangman were going at each other was so, like, get a load of these guys. Like, yeah. what if he was out there being, like, Swerve, now that Hangman's gone, like, do you even know who you are? You know, like, there's all kinds of stuff he could say where it's like, you were so obsessed with Hangman, what was that about? Like, to at least try to, like, get in Swerve's head or do something, but it's just like, you can't win the belt, and it's like, this this is nothing, this is... Yeah, it's can't really he just bully? Can't he bully some people backstage, or can't he just do something clearly bad that then Swerve can be like, "I wouldn't be bad like that if I had the belt." I mean, yeah, like, really ha- feeling good and having fun. <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's like you, a man cannot create emotional conflict all on his own. He needs another man who's in it with him. Yeah. Hangman and Swerve were really in it together. They yeah. fucking did it. They did it, girls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samoa Joe. Stop slacking off. It's a group project. Yeah. Okay. You guys I need sit you to down. bring something to the table. Mm-hmm. Stop phoning it in. Stop being like, I asked G- Chat GPT to give me generic oh wrestling God. promo, and that's what came out. It might be. Okay. Um, let's. Oh, can we briefly check in on little Kyle O'Reilly? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have to. I put this on here. I'm like, this is nothing, but I need to talk about it. So Kyle had another little backstage promo on Dynamite with Renee, maybe, I think, where he yet again was doing his big, huge seal eyes at the screen and being like, it's just been such a hard year for me, and I really hope I can still hang. I don't know if there's a place for me on this roster. And... I know we have said on the on the podcast multiple times now, we've said he was trapped in the Arctic. He <laughs> ate his shipmates. He is traumatized. That is all true. But what's also true is that Kyle O'Reilly is a rat. He was born a rat, and he will die a rat. He's a rat, top to tip, 
at his core. Mm -hmm. he, when he looks at me with those limpid eyes and <laughs> says, I don't know if there's a space for me on this roster. I say, okay, liar. <laughs> okay, little man who's about to go, you're about to do something so bad. I will never buy him as a face. And in fact, I got deep into my, I'm thinking, thinking this through and I thought, okay, he ate his shipmates in the Arctic. I do not think that they drew legal sea straws <laughs> or whatever it is sea that we straws. found out you have to do. <laughs> I don't think that anybody drew straws. I think oh. that he went loco. I think he <laughs> killed all his shipmates. He had winter madness. I think he hung them in the cargo hold mm. by their feet mm. and they froze. Mm -hmm. And then he ate them little by little over the course of six months and yeah. so is he traumatized? Yes. But was he very badly behaved boy? Yes. <laughs> and will he do it again? Maybe. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be in the Arctic with him. Are you worried that he's going to do it at AEW? <laughs> Maybe. If he can find a cargo hold. Oh, my God. What if he ate the whole Undisputed Kingdom? <laughs> Maybe we could solve all our problems. <laughs> Wardlow's got a lot of meat on him, Kyle. The first time that Kyle bites someone in a match, we're going to scream. <laughs> the first time he does little bitey and a kissy like Mox. Yeah, we're going to lose danger. our minds. Yeah. It's true. I think our friend Emmy said the other day that um, a heel who's a liar really can't turn babyface very effectively because you're always like, oh, yeah, right. And I think it's true. Kyle. Little rat boy. Little rat boy. Cannibal rat. <laughs> little cannibal rat. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see what he gets up to, but I'll never trust him, and I love him more than life itself. <laughs> Thanks for coming back from the Arctic, Kyle. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the women. So Mercedes was on commentary for the Dynamite Women's 4-Way this week between Willow, Anna J, Stat, and Sky Blue, and this was for a title shot, or as Manola called it, a date against <laughs> Julia Hart at Dynasty. <laughs> I don't know why Manolo said that, but <laughs> I'm instantly <laughs> onboarding it. Like yeah. Swerve mm -hmm. and Joe have a, di a date at Dynamite. Like, yeah, yeah, obviously. Like that's that's yeah. a fun way to say that. <laughs> should be should people like maybe be when they're proposing a match? Should they sometimes be like, "Do you want to go on a date? Do you want to go on a date with me? Mm. Yeah. Do you want to go on a date with me on Dynamite next week?" <laughs> Brian Danielson, do you want to go on a date with me? At no, Brian Danielson, <laughs> Will Ospreay have a date at Dynasty. They have also. a really fun. They have a really fun date set up for They're Dynasty. They're both so excited yeah, for it. Really they can't wait for their date. Uh, okay, so plot relevant stuff from this match. Mercedes and Willow had a stare down. Uh, Willow ended up pinning Anna J for the win. Julia Hart came out and hit her with the championship belt. And she and uh, then Julia Hart and Mercedes had a stare down. Uh, later, we got a backstage segment with Stokely, Willow, and Chris. So Willow was talking up her win and promising that she was going to get the TBS belt off of Julia Hart at Dynasty. Stokely warned Mercedes not to interfere. And Chris said, Willow, when you become the new face of TBS... I'm going to be right there with you. And then she hugged her close while shooting the camera. One of the most sinister looks I have ever seen. <laughs> I didn't know that Chris could do an evil look like no. that. But immediately I was like, Willow, you're in danger, girl. <laughs> I know. I was like, is this Chris's moment? Is this her true form? Like, look at this face acting. Now, I will say my second thought after I was like, that's a really evil look was I actually promised that I would never tell myself that any member of best friends is doing a heel turn ever again because remember the last time i was like greg is sending really clear signals that he wants to heel turn on do you remember how friends? many conversations you had us have where you were like i'm just really worried yeah. about it and ann and i had I moved was really into worried. this space where we were like i don't think the breadcrumbs I mean... will ever be real <laughs> you guys and you guys were right but i'm still like it was all there. Greg, you were doing it. What, were you just having gas? Were you just having a bad week digestively? So you were making those faces and acting like you were going to murder him? He probably Whatever. did have gas. You've seen how many hard-boiled eggs he brings onto planes. <laughs> just one of many reasons that I don't think it's really a good idea to be flying these days. <laughs> um... Yeah, but I don't know. It seemed it seemed straightforwardly like yeah. a, like an evil heel turn look. And I do think this one is probably happening. I mean, as much because the male members of Best Friends are not in the picture as <laughs> as for any other reason. 
Yeah, if they were still at her side, I'd be like, I don't know, you can't trust anything. But <laughs> I think uh, one of them has to turn. Like, I wasn't sure yeah. whether it was going to be one, the other, or both. But I think like something has to happen there. If Stat turns on Willow, do you think that one of them gets Stokely in the divorce? If so, which one or neither? I think the one who turns heel gets Stokely, right? Because he's kind of a heel manager. He is, but what if he's decided that he likes... I think it would be kind of poetic if he would re- only cared about Chris at the beginning, but then had to accept Willow into his heart. And then if if Chris turned heel, it would be really poetic for Stokely to stay with Willow and learn to be a good boy. It would be. I do think it would be it would be funny if he was fighting his nature staying with Willow, but I do I do think even in that scenario, he'd probably eventually have to just go with Chris instead. Yeah, that is, I guess I maybe. do want to... I mean, this is one of those moments where I'm like, they're not, I don't think it like in wrestling, they're just never going to do that. But that TV show would slap. You know what I mean? Like Mm. I want to watch like the TV show where like Chris, something happens to Chris. She runs away or she joins a cult or something. I don't know who the, whatever. And Stokely and Willow have to team up (laughs) to save her. And, and they are annoying each other so much. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm like, (laughs) Yeah, I would watch like 16 hours of that straight. No problem. Mm. If they would make it for us, which I doubt they would. And if it wasn't too intellectual, like white collar. (laughs) And what about what I said I described would be intellectual? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay. Um, mm, Oh, any thoughts on Mercedes this week? The relationships potentially developing with her. She was on commentary. Anything you want to touch on? I thought the match was really good, actually. I had a good time watching. I thought Chris was great and Willow. Mm -hmm. Um, And I am liking the dynamics. Like, it seems like they're doing some, you know, not... Not complex exactly, but it seems like they're setting up, you know, multifaceted. Mercedes. Yeah, multifaceted. Lightly multifaceted. Exactly. A few different. Yeah. I think um, Mercedes is pretty like soft spoken. So, like, I didn't hear most of what she said on commentary. I just wasn't listening to it. But I think a lot of people are talking about whether or not she sounded rehearsed or not, which is fine. Like, I don't really have an opinion on it. But it's just very interesting to me how many people were like, yeah, promos are really not her best like that's not her wheelhouse and I'm like oh interesting because she's gonna have to give a lot of promos and the only thing that we're actually able to judge her on right now is promos so that yeah. doesn't seem like a great vibe we need to see we need to see some wrestling like I don't think anyone on this podcast is gonna get super head up about it like we'll see it when we see it and we're at our leisure pretty much until then but it seems clear that we're not gonna have a real opinion on her and on like i don't know like what i i don't know it seems like we need to see her wrestle that's yeah that's it it'll be interesting to see how her promos develop because i think people are also complaining that she yeah. seems kind of like inauthentic or like she's doing kind of a fake character but it's like you know it's like she was in wwe for 10 years and that's like her whole wrestling career basically yeah. and it's like things are so different over there it'll be interesting to see like how she finds her feet and what kind of persona she develops yeah i think especially when someone ends up in like a new different situation like you could be you could be really surprised by what people yeah. adapt to what they find in themselves like you know yeah. I, I i don't think that just because she's been on wwe for a long time you don't necessarily know what we're gonna see from her in aw um especially as she gets comfortable but I am excited to someday see her wrestle. I will say that. (laughs) (laughs) And finally, uh, Darby did a little sketch with Tony Hawk on Dynamite. (laughs) And he said, this was the first time I'd heard this, that he was going to climb Everest for Tony Hawk's skate park charity. (laughs) Um, But now he can't climb Everest because his little foot is in a little scooter. So um, Tony Hawk came on TV instead and they talked about the skate park charity and that was the segment and there's no reason for us to talk about it except that i was cracking up i thought it was so funny 
I said, the, what is this? The idea of climbing Everest for charity when it costs like at least $60,000 to climb Mount Everest is like the funniest thing I've ever heard. It's like, guys, we just have to raise more than 100 k to break even, Like, but we'll get there. These skate parks, they're going to get some money. Don't worry about it. It is like, I think he wanted to climb Everest and I do buy that he was like, who can I partner with? And maybe I'll do it in honor of the skate park charity or whatever. That's fine. I'm not dumping on Darby. It was hysterical. It was quite <laughs> funny. And that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> oh, he makes me laugh and he keeps me young. That's what I'll say. <laughs> Just the dumbest little adrenaline jump here. I honestly, they were showing him, or this was either, it was either in this segment or it was a video I saw on Twitter where he's like at the top of a what is it called? A skate, oh, like a, a boot, you know, a little Yui. It's a pipe. A pipe. Half pipe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Half pipe. <laughs> anyway. He's you gave me this look like you didn't even know me anymore for coming up with that. <laughs> well, I think I half thought pipe. that it was. Well. I thought, I thought the half pipe was the move. I didn't realize that oh. was the, but Not, I, but I don't know anything. I played I've, a little Tony Hawk whatever in the oh, 90s in your his video game yeah okay. when my brother okay, got give up the controller <laughs> not very we got much a, I we got really a tony hawk it. fan on our hands here. <laughs> we got a hawk head. <laughs> hawk head in the chat i wouldn't go that far but yeah. <laughs> anyway i saw him up there with tony and and darby just has his one um leg on his little scooter and i said you just let him go up there with a literal wheel on and you trust him not to be like watch me <laughs> do a a, an ollie with this or whatever <laughs> do a little head. very nice <laughs> that was a good one Thank you. <laughs> i said that's not a safe situation it's for not him. no <laughs> they should be supervising him a little bit better for sure i don't think they should have given him something that's like so much like a skateboard as a medical <laughs> assistant tool <laughs> that's all <laughs> Okay. Agreed. Does any, anybody have anything else uh, to say about wrestling or Tony Hawk or no? It's crazy to only time have. That <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy to only have one episode of wrestling to be reviewing this week. It feels so like fresh. Yeah. I know it was kind of nice, and I was like, "How many? Like we had like a year where that was just the mm. case. Can you yeah. imagine? Well, I know. Just <laughs> honestly, if I didn't have to open so many different recaps." I wouldn't mind, you know, if when we're when we do have three episodes on our plate, but it's so many tabs that start to get open and it's so hard to find the what you're looking for. I know. So it's a logistical issue more than anything. I know. And I'm really going through it because me and Doc Chris Miller oh. in um, Bleacher Report, we're not mm. getting along. His heart's I can't not believe in that it. your husband Eric Beeson left you. It's really there's a epidemic of divorces lately. I know. Have you guys he that? went full WWE. Because he loves <gasps> punk. Horrifying. Oh, I, I know. So he. Recapped. I don't think he should have that much autonomy about what he recaps. I know. It just doesn't you seem get right. back in here and try to think <laughs> of positive things to say about the Bucks. <laughs> I'm like, he quit. Well, I, he quit so he didn't have to compliment the Bucks on their tag run. Uh, uh, if, just he like loved, FDR if he really loved job. you, he would have done the work. I know. That's right. I know. But Marriage instead, is work, Eric instead he went to WWE and now I'm left with Chris <laughs> Muller who... <laughs> Who, like, glances over everything. He'll just be like, yeah. And then they fought. Okay. And I'm like, no. <laughs> you have to say something infuriating so I can pick a fight in another document that you'll never know about. <laughs> now, Leah, I have a proposal for you. What's that? Do you want to wife swap? And mm. I'll take Doc Chris Muller. He wouldn't swap. And you take Manolo. He absolutely wouldn't. He wouldn't be enough for your you schedule. You wouldn't help me? No. He doesn't wow. give you. He doesn't give you enough information. You would not. You would. Wow. He, you would. You. You would be. Suffering. I've. I've. I've switched over almost completely to the AEW recaps. Have you? Yeah. Well, they do have a lot of detail in those AEW recaps. You can they do, except they that. don't include any of the promos. Yeah. That's the only thing. Or any. If it happened backstage, they mm. don't know about it, which is crazy. <laughs> to me. I wish I knew who. I know we've said it's Tony, but we know it's not. <laughs> who is writing them, and what do they think the purpose of the recap is? Yeah, that's what I want to know. know. Who's reading them? Who's reading them? I need market research. I need to know <laughs> what's how the how the sausage is getting made, and then I need to change how the sausage gets. 
it's made and what the sausage tastes like on the I, other end. I'd love to know what all recaps, yeah, what they think their audience is because they spend a lot of time recapping moves. And I, I'm just like imagining the person being like, and then was the Falcon Arrow, like, was that towards the beginning of the match or the end? Like, I got to look it up. Is that I happening? Would think if you care about the moves that much, shouldn't you watch the match? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, wh- I don't know. It's like, who is this serving? Yeah. Well, this is the funny thing is that, like, don't you feel like if we had any kind of access to insiders, this is the exact kind of questions we'd be asking. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah. most Absolutely. people, if they had inside information, they'd be looking for dirt and gossip and shit. And we're like, yo, who does those recaps? And what is, <laughs> yeah. what is their deal with the exclamation point? <laughs> and could you walk us through your gear? How do you wear it? What are the layers? <laughs> what are the layers? <laughs> You know what? And I think that we would, I think that we would, we would benefit personally <laughs> from those conversations. We're getting a press pass and we're going to the scrum and we're getting in there and we're saying, Tony Khan, I'd love to dig into the AEW.com recaps oh if we could God. for a moment. Got some hard hitting questions for you. And while we're there, will you sign our yarn dolls do th- that we definitely made? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> wow, she's spicy today, girl. <laughs> Um, I am so sleepy and stupid in my brain that I think we got to end it here. If that's okay. Let's do it. Imagine it on this day. Imagine if I was like, Ooh, no, no. Oh, <laughs> I literally, is... if, if my girl said we are, we aren't ending this podcast, we have more to what say. We just held you hostage. <laughs> and we were like, I draw myself up in my power and I say, girls, what do we need to talk about? <laughs> I can do it for you. <laughs> Allie, uh, could you recap? Uh, uh, I've just had to look through our grab bag <laughs> to see if I could even find anything to make this joke about. And I couldn't even, I couldn't even find it. <laughs> Literally nothing else on the show. Yeah, I guess, I, mean, I guess we can end the podcast. Sure. Yeah, we'll end the <laughs> podcast. I've been Allie this whole time. <laughs> I've been in. And I've been Leah. It's Tunnel Talk. Our theme is by Chris Corkin. You can find us on Twitter and Tumblr at Tunnel Talk Pod via email, tunneltalkpod at gmail.com. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on the Social Suplex Network feed, along with a lot of other great wrestling podcasts. And you can find us on the Social Suplex Network Discord, uh, where we've been talking about our uh, our special matches we watched uh, for the past couple of days and having a blast. Um, that's all. <laughs> what, do, what do I say at the end? Usually? Please come please, back please next come week. Back next week. <laughs> There's nothing before that. I go from we're having a ball. Please come back next week. That's all I do. That's what I do. I don't say anything like stay, stay frosty and please. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think one of those was a real ending or do I have to say that again?